Okay. So you can you, you can refer to the uh, to the recording later on. Okay. What organis organisms can be categorized as pests? Not all organisms. Okay. Example: microbes. Microbes are microorganisms. Eh? Uh, there are many different types of microorganisms. You have bacteria, you have viruses, rickettsia, fungus, prions. Uh, these are called uh, microorganisms, and there are many more. They are not pests. They are pathogens. So do not confuse between pests and pathogens. Pathogens are microorganisms that transmit disease. Okay? So please be careful. Uh, pests and pathogens are two different categories or organism that is troublesome to human being. Pests uh, are basically animals uh, animals that, that are troublesome one way or another, but pathogens specifically refer, refers to organisms and particularly microorganism that uh, can transmit disease. Okay, they are agents of diseases. Okay, so that is pathogen. And please do not mix up with pests. We don't call uh, COVID nineteen, for instance, a pest. Okay, uh, it is a pathogen. Yeah? And even so, it is uh, quite debatable because uh, viruses. Uh, they are essentially non-living. Yeah? But they cause diseases and they transmit diseases and therefore can be considered as pathogens in that uh, context. What about plants? Okay, so far we have referred to only animals. Generally, we do not include plants as pests, even though they can be troublesome or unwanted. Okay, we call them weeds, okay, rumpai. Okay. So normally we don't call, we don't call uh, unwanted uh, plants or troublesome plants as pests, but rather we call them or refer to them as weeds. Okay, uh, pests are animals that compete and also pose a health hazard to human beings. So that is generally the meaning of pests that compete with human being. Uh, on the latter's resources and also pose as health hazard, yeah, one way or another to us. Again, it hanged. Maybe I should consider. sharing the PowerPoint without the uh... okay, where were we? Sorry for the technical piece. I do not know what happened. Okay, I'll share the PowerPoint without a uh, slideshow. It's much easier this way. Okay. Now, okay. Let us continue. The common term for pest is vermin. Uh, this is the uh, daily use, uh, language use. Eh? It's called vermin. Can we exterminate them? Of course, we cannot, yeah? like I have explained before. Yeah? Removing them altogether is uh, a futile effort. Satu usha siya siya, because they will continue to coexist and live alongside human beings. They have been around for, for as long as human beings exist. Yeah? And they have evolved over time to uh, to adapt to the living conditions uh, and they are very adaptive yeah, adaptive maknanya dia senang uh, senang untuk menyesuaikan diri because they have become a part of the ecosystem yeah. so what is ecosystem 
ecosystem is the uh, the uh, various components in the environment, be it biotic and abiotic. Biotic is a living uh, component and abiotic is a physical component. And these components are interacting with each other in the environment. Thus, it uh, becomes an ecosystem. So that is the definition of ecosystem. They have become... Uh, Uh, they have become very successful uh, in adapting to the environment, uh, natural or man-made. They have adapted themselves completely uh, to live in the environment, whether it is a natural environment or man-made or being uh, modified by man. Okay? We have to manage them. So what do we mean by managing pests? We manage the, uh, the population to uh, to a certain uh, density that is manageable, okay, uh, that will not uh, cause uh, so much trouble to human being. Okay? We employ strategies to reduce the number to manageable population size, a sustainable outcome. And this is this is uh, a successful management when it is sustainable. I mean, you manage to maintain the numbers at a certain degree. Example, we have 500 rats, rats per hectare in an oil palm plantation. Okay, The management employ a strategy whereby the result, the density of rats in the oil palm decreased to 50 rats per hectare. So we have reduced the population size from 500 rats per hectare, which is unmanageable, of course, and will result in colossal loss of, uh, of uh, all palm fruits yeah, to just 50, uh, which is a very manageable number. And uh, you can, uh, uh, you, you may lose some of your agriculture product, but uh, still you make a lot of income. So that is the an example. So if you have a, a high red population in the city, so you have to reduce them so that the threat of uh, transmission of disease can be lowered. Yeah? Do the plantation incur losses? Yes, they still do. However, the, the losses were drastically reduced from the original amount, let's say 30%, to less than 5%. And that is what we call a sustainable outcome of the management. And this is in agriculture term, referred to as the economic threshold level, aras ambang economy. I'm quite sure you have come across this term uh, when you took PLP 3104, or it could be referred to as something else, but uh, it refers to a situation whereby you lose a certain amount of agricultural produce, but you still uh, make uh, profit. Uh, you you uh, you come up with with a certain revenue from your agricultural activities. Let's say we set the economic threshold level in our city at five rats per 100 square meter. So that is the economic threshold level. Okay, uh, it's no more than five rats per 100 square meter. When we ask, uh, assess eh, the baseline population density, uh, it, the uh, outcome is 500 rats per 100 square meter. A huge number of rat pests can be considered an outbreak. Okay? We employ a strategy to reduce the number uh, from five from 500 to five, uh, which is 100 times uh, reduction. So that is the idea of lowering the uh, population size to meet the, the economic threshold level. And who set this economic threshold level? It is up to us. We set our own economic threshold level. Okay? So it is up to the management 
for example, uh, if you refer to a city, then uh, the city council will have to decide what would be the economic threshold level depending on the risk involved. If you can cut down leptospirosis to a minimum case, for instance, by reducing the number of rats to 500 per square meter, then that is considered your economic threshold level. Categories of pests. Now let's look at the categories of pests. We restrict this to the urban environment. Okay, now pests, they live in many different uh, environments because they can adapt themselves to the different types of environment, climate, yeah? and uh, also circumstances. Pests that threatens public health, poses as public health threats. Now, this is number one. The most important kind of pest is one that pose a health risk, public health risk. And we can list them down. Uh, for instance, number one, rat. Number two, mosquitoes. Number three, cockroaches. Number four, birds. Uh, number five, one, two, three, four, five, housefly, lalat. Eh? Number six, ticks, lice, mites, and fleas. Okay, these are the uh, kutu. Eh? Kutu dan keluarganya. Then bait bugs. Bait bugs are insects that uh, infest your bed, your pillow, and can uh, can, can can cause considerable uh, itchings. Okay, these are just examples, and you can list many more. Okay, the second category of pests that we will cover in this course are structural pests. And this is, this is also a pest of considerable importance eh? uh, because they are, can be costly to, to, to manage and they can cause considerable damage. Uh, termites, these are the most important pests. When we talk about threats on uh, on uh, uh, structures, eh? especially uh, buildings. Uh, number two, wood develop uh, wood destroying beetles, and there are many such beetles. Uh, we will go through through the different species uh, in this uh, course, and then we have the carpenter ants, eh? so more tukang, and we we have the carpenter bees, lebah uh, tukang, and there are. Uh, a few more that we will consider when we talk about uh, structural pests. Okay, uh, another category of pests that we will cover is pests that cause disturbance okay? ataupun haiwan kacau ganggu. And this, uh, the pest that, that is uh, Included in this category are ticks, mites, lice, bed bugs, agas, eh? uh, that is referred to as midges, sand flies, nuts, etc., cockroaches, millipedes, centipedes, and there are many more. Eh? And one of the uh, one of the disturbance is called entomophobia. So what is entomophobia? The fear of insects. Takut kepada serangga. And it can be pathological. It can be uh, a, a medical, it can, it can, uh, it can cause med uh, in medical implication. So that is entomophobia. It's just like claustrophobia, a fear, a fear of a small, uh, please, yeah. okay. xenophobia, a fear of new things. We will discuss about that also. Uh, next, horticultural pests. Okay, this is agricultural pests, uh, pests of plants grown for landscaping purposes, potted plants, 
ornamental ni tanaman hiasan orchards kebun buah-buahan urban agriculture which is a very important uh, type of agriculture today yeah? uh, pertanian bandar urban forest yeah? uh, hutan bandar planting trees for aesthetic reasons uh, okay Well, the next categories of pets is pet. But I have to remind you, pet is not pest per se. Haiwan kesayangan bukan haiwan perosak. But if pets are not taken care of by the owner, sekiranya haiwan kesayangan itu tidak dipedulikan ataupun tidak di, apa ni, dipelihara dengan sempurna oleh pemiliknya, it will create a pest situation yang akan melahirkan situasi perusahaan yeah? so please remember pet is not pest but if it is not taken care of by the owner then it will bring out a pest situation they may become a nuisance to neighbors that is a sort of thing yeah? a nuisance to neighbors gangguan kepada jiran-jiran and even to the owner yeah? the owner is also at risk because parasites from the pet can threaten the health and well-being of the owner. Uh, parasit ni pada tubuh haiwan kesayangan tadi boleh mengancam kesihatan dan juga kesejahteraan pemilik. So in that sense, pet can become a pest, quote unquote, although pet originally is not a pest. Only if it is not uh, being taken care of and it's a pest are not being looked after. Okay, and then uh, the next thing is trees. Trees ini adalah haiwan yang berkeliaran. They resort to rummaging the bins, menyelongka tong sampah, and create a very disturbing situation in the neighborhood. Menimbulkan keresahan dalam kejiranan. Contoh littering, uh, apa ni, uh, uh, menyebabkan sampah bertaburan, uh, making noises. Uh, buat bising, yeah. uh, bahkan uh, membuang najis merata-rata. Okay, viral. Okay, the next category is uh, viral. They can return back to the original instinct in order to survive in the environment. Okay, a pet, if it is disowned by the owner, apabila ianya dibuang oleh, oleh pemiliknya, dia akan menjadi stray. Yeah. Dia akan menjadi haiwan yang berkeliaran. And Uh, if they stay that in that uh, uh, environment for for for, uh, for for quite some time, it will turn into a peril. So what what is peril? Peril is animals that used to to uh, live with a human being, yeah. for instance, a pet, yeah. or uh, it can be a livestock, kerbau yeah. atau lembu, that was uh, once being uh, have an owner. But later on, they were they were released, and they have to find food on their own. Then they will become viral. They, they will get back the original instinct in order to survive in the environment. Maksudnya, dia akan menjadi liar. They turn into a wild population. They may become aggressive. They start to hunt in pack. For example, so dogs, eh? anjing akan mula uh, memburu. Uh, secara berkumpulan and physically attack human especially minus yang menyerang manusia terutama kanak-kanak so that's how a pet uh, can convert into stress and later on feral pet and also livestock eh? okay wildlife uh, this is another uh, fine uh, boundary. Wildlife is never a pest. Hidupan liar. Wildlife are protected. Hidupan liar dilindungi. So please do not associate wildlife as pest. Yeah. However, the circumstances may lead to a pest situation again. Yeah. And the wildlife is not the pest. The situation that give rise to it is due to conflict with human beings. Okay. Now wildlife Uh, they are protected. But in some situation, it may lead, may lead to conflict with human being and that will give rise to a pest 
situation, development, expansion of human settlement, which, which encroaches into the natural range of the wildlife. Yeah. Pembangunan, yeah. uh, kemudian uh, membesarkan kawasan kediaman manusia yang kemudiannya menceroboh uh, kawasan hidupan liar, contohnya macam secondary forest, yeah. uh, hutan simpan ataupun uh, hutan uh, yang sudah di Uh, sudah di uh, locked up forest atau hutan, hutan yang sudah dibalak ni eh? forest fringes pinggiran hutan even forest reserve uh, kawasan yang uh, di dipelihara ni eh? forest reserve untuk uh, wildlife wildlife conservation uh, pemeliharaan hidupan liar logging activities especially illegal logging deforestation for plantation or farming so this is a very serious issue and uh, it actually uh, a big threat eh, to our wildlife because of uh, development that is not for properly monitored and that is not uh, properly mitigated so we have a situation where whereby our wildlife is threatened For instance, our tigers, we are now down to uh, 200, 250 individual tigers throughout the peninsula. And if uh, if uh, poaching is not is not uh, is not uh, dealt with, and also uh, development uh, that encroaches into Uh, the forest, the natural forest, then by 2050 it has been uh, it has been uh, predicted eh, that our tigers will be will be uh, will disappear altogether eh, by 2050. That means uh, 30 years down the road there will be no more tigers and in other words we will lose one of one of our uh, symbol and one of our symbol and also our wildlife remember our tiger is a, a subspecies uh, panthera tigris jacksoni it is a subspecies that you cannot find somewhere else You cannot find them in Sumatra. You cannot find them in Southeast Asia, the rest of Southeast Asia, and uh, you may have the Bengal tiger in India and the, and the Siberian tiger in in in, in Russia, eh? uh, and also the Sumatran tiger in Sumatra. But once uh, we lose our tiger in Peninsula Malaysia, then that's it. Eh? Uh, Panthera tigris jacksoni will disappear forever, and it will never, it will never be revived. So categories of pests uh, when with regard to wildlife, uh, these are only uh, some of them: elephant, uh, wild boar, macaques, eh? sun bear, tiger, and snakes. We will try to look at some of them in this course. Okay, invasive animals, animals that are brought into the country. They are not originally native to the country. They are brought in. Uh, okay, so locally present wildlife. This is called endemic. Uh, pollinating beetles brought in brought in from South Africa. Uh, to boost oil palm production, these are beneficial insects. We don't call them uh, invasive animals or pestiferous insects. They are brought in for a certain purpose. And then, uh, invasive means brought in intentionally or otherwise, unintended. And that does not serve any specific uh, purpose. And examples of these are African catfish. It destroys the river. Lake ecosystem by predating on local species. 
So it disrupt and also destroy the community, the wildlife community uh, in our water bodies, in our lake, in our river system. Yeah? And crows, uh, crows were brought in from India at the turn of the last century to control pests of coffee in uh, Lembah Kelang, yeah? Kelang Valley. Uh, they used to grow coffee uh, during the colonial period. So the coffee is being infested by insects. In order, in order to control the insect pests, they brought in crows from India. Now the crow has turned into a pestiferous pet. Gagak yang dia bawa masuk itu, kini sudah menjadi haiwan perosak di negara kita, terutama di pantai barat. Then another example is the Burmese python, ular sawah burma. Uh, they they brought in brought in as pet, especially in the US. And then after a while, when it grows too big and they cannot feed them anymore, the owner released them in the Everglades in Florida. Yeah? Uh, Everglades is a, a swampy area. Yeah? So they thought uh, the python will live there. Uh, well, okay, because uh, they can find their own food there. But now it has become a pest because they feed on the local animals. These local animals have no exposure to such a huge snake predator. And so some of them is at the brink of extinction. And there are so many Burmese python because they reproduce. Once you release the pythons in a certain habitat, then they will start to mate. The male and female python will start to mate and they will start to reproduce and it becomes a pest now and a risk to anyone who uh, use the Everglade as a recreation area. And I believe this is, uh, there are two more slides, eh? Okay, emergent pest. Emergent pest, ini adalah perosak yang, yang uh, baru muncul, eh? emergent. And one of them is the EBN, Edible Bird Nest Swiftlet. Uh, apa ni, burung walid. Yang diternak ya, untuk mendapatkan sarang burung. And we have swiftlet ranching in urban areas. Uh, apa ni, orang membina rumah walid ya, di kawasan bandar. Bukan saja ianya dibina in the oil palm plantation and also in the rice field area. But now they are starting swiftlet ranching in urban areas, for example, in Kluang, in uh, Klang, yeah? uh, in Kota Baru. Yeah? And this causes some problem yeah? leading to noise pollution, littering, yeah? uh, some najis yang bertaburan, feelings of insecurity of patrons. Sebab kadang-kadang rumah walid ini dibina di rumah-rumah uh, kedai ya, yang tidak digunakan lagi dia modify menjadi rumah uh, walid dan ini akan mengganggu uh, patrons ataupun mereka yang mengunjungi kedai-kedai makan restoran yang berhampiran dengan baunya dengan majisnya dan juga dengan kebisingannya sebab mereka menggunakan bird call ya. is an electronic system whereby it produces the sound of the swiftlet to attract swifts, swiftlet to come in and build their nest there. So it is uh, irritating and also it uh, leads to feelings of insecurity, rasa tak selamat eh, kepada pengunjung, pengunjung. And lastly, uh, we have other pests also, other pests, uh, bun, bun swallows, Bats, uh, uh, there are there are many. If we have the opportunity, then we will cover them. Unless uh, otherwise, we will only make a mention of them. Uh, and uh, and the most important thing is how to deal with them and also uh, manage the pest population. So uh, that is the end of the lecture for the first lecture. So I open for question and answer.
Kalau ada soalan, then you need post it. You can write them in the chat section, or you can you can simply ask them verbally. Please do so. Any questions? Anyone? Boleh tanya dalam bahasa pun tak apa. Although we have a two hour duration lecture, eh, but I don't think I will spend all two hours for lecture. At, at the most, a lecture will run up to one, one hour and a half. Eh, because uh, peace, when you online lecture, it can be quite stressful because uh, if you have another class after this, then you have to uh, move on to the next lecture. So at least uh, if the lecture lasts for only one and a half hour, then you have at least half an hour to prepare for the next one. Okay. So attendance, uh, for attendance, uh, just write on the chat box uh, hadir okay. your name and and also indicate that you you are present or hadir you can start uh, indicating your your attendance eh? uh, yeah. and then i will print them as evidence of attendance Um, Doctor. Yes. One Rasila. Uh, uh, yes. Saya nak tanya. Hmm. Kalau kalau negara lain kan, contoh macam uh, negara macam Dubai kan, dia boleh piara apa tu? Burung. Bukan. Uh, yang wildlife tu yang macam contoh lah haimau si kan. Contoh. Okay. Ah. Huh? Contoh haimau apa? Ah, uh, okay. Pas jam singa. Hmm. Uh, kan? Jadi hmm. kalau kat Malaysia, boleh ke piara? Okay. Jadi sebagai uh, pet? Itu uh, hobi orang kaya lah tu. Kan? You're talking about Dubai, Qatar, apa semua tu. They may have the luxury. Uh, mereka mungkin mempunyai sumber ataupun kekayaan untuk memelihara haiwan-haiwan eksotik macam tu. Yang uh, berbahaya yang perlu uh, diberi makan uh, yang banyak yeah? dan juga exposing themselves to danger yeah? uh, creatures like crocodiles, uh, lion, macam tu kan? Betul tak? Now, uh, kalau di negara kita, kita tertakluk kepada undang-undang uh, kebanyakan haiwan seperti harimau, gajah semua tu adalah haiwan yang dilindungi di bawah Akta Perlindungan Hidupan Dia 1972 yang telah disemak, di-reviewed ni eh, kepada Akta Perlindungan Alam Sekitar 2010. Jadi, uh, sesiapa yang memelihara hidupan dia adalah melakukan satu kesalahan dan boleh di-compound sehingga RM10,000 Malaysia. Okay? So, uh, Jangan apa ni, uh, jangan ambil mudah uh, memelihara contohnya macam uh, harimau dahat ya, ataupun uh, apa ni kucing hutan contohnya. Okay. Those animals are protected under the law and you, if you are caught uh, keeping such animals, you will be compounded. Ya. You will be compounded. Ya. Jadi, there's, there's no question of keeping wildlife. No question. And even if the animals come from overseas, maksudnya haiwan yang dibawa masuk, that is also uh, subjected to uh, law, yeah? uh, to licensing. And uh, you cannot simply brought in any wildlife from overseas and keep them as pet. Okay? Uh, it is against the law.
Adakah saya menjawab soalan tu? Okey ke? Boleh eh? Okey. Ada soalan lain? Please, please feel free to ask eh? I don't mean to say that I will limit the lecture to one hour to or to one and a half hour. If, if there is a long discussion, I will entertain entertain them. Eh? Please, please, if you have any queries or even if you want to discuss anything, uh, you are you are well, most welcome. Feel free to do so. Any other question? So everyone, have you indicate your attendance, your presence in this lecture? Semudah, eh? There's only nine or ten of you in this course. Eh? Okay, uh, we have our lab on Thursday, right? Is that so? Hari Kamis, 2 hingga 5 petang. Betul tak? Ya, yeah, Doktor. Uh, yeah, then, doktor. Untuk minggu 1 sampai minggu 3 ni, we will st still have our lectures and lab online. We will only have face-to-face -face beginning on the fourth week. Right? Betul kan? Yeah. Itu, itu dia punya perkeliling kan? Uh -huh. uh, so all of you now is still at home ataupun dah 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 masuk UPM? Dah masuk college. Dah masuk college dah. Ad, ada yang belum masuk lagi? Masih di rumah? Um, saya doktor. Ada? Ada. Uh, okay tak apa. Tapi by the fourth week tu our lecture will be face to face ya. Eh? Face to face dan juga uh, lab. Okay. Okay, kalau tak ada, uh, kita jumpa besok pukul 2 petang. For our uh, Mali. Dan saya akan letak dalam uh, Putra Blas uh, rancangan pengajaran, jadual-jadual eh, uh, kuliah selepas ini. Apa-apa announcement, uh, please uh, please apa ni, monitor your Putra Blas and better still, kita buat WhatsApp group. Uh, can anyone volunteer to be the class monitor ataupun uh, apa ni class leader ada siapa-siapa yang nak volunteer uh, buat whatsapp group and include me in that uh, apa ni whatsapp group so that if there is any announcement ke, ataupun emergency ke then uh, we can communicate through the whatsapp group kalau kalau short notice kan uh, macam apa ni uh, kuliah tak dapat di, di, diadakan pada pada hari tertentu dan saya nak maklumkan bolehlah saya hantar kepada WhatsApp group tu. Kalau nak kalau nak communicate through email it will take some time. Kadang-kadang kita tak baca tu. Tak sempat baca, ya. Yeah? Kalau uh, tak ada bantahan uh, boleh tak kita minta Syakira untuk jadi uh, ketua boleh. Bukannya susah sangat nak buat apa ni banner WhatsApp group je. Boleh? Dah ada dah. Tinggal nak masuk. Nak invite doktor. Oh dah ada dah. Ah dah. Anyway, siapa yang bersedia untuk jadi ketua kelas ni? Kalau ada apa-apa hal Saya boleh nak. Siap ah. Owen, Owen. Ah. Yeah. How how do I call you? Owen? Yes, o okay. Owen can, Owen also okay. can. Terima kasih Owen. Okay, terima kasih Owen for volunteering. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you you are the class leader, right? Eh? Uh, uh, ketua kelas. Okay, semua. Kalau tak ada apa-apa lagi, then we will meet you to again tomorrow on Thursday, pukul 2 petang. Saya akan bagi dia punya link nanti. Okay? Terima kasih. Okey, terima kasih banyak-banyak. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan uh, salam sejahtera semua. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Thank you. Semua dah ni dah dah letak apa ni nama untuk attendance eh? Dah letak. Okey, thank you. Thank you.
to receive again.